Good morning everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Ali Board and today I am broadcasting something that I try to do every single week called Technique Tuesday. Now we have several audiences with us this morning. It might be that you are watching me live via my Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard Facebook page. It might be that you are watching on Catch Up via the Artists Demo Days Facebook page and it might be that you're watching on Catch up either via my website, my blog, or on YouTube. No matter how you are accessing this broadcast this morning, you are very, very welcome indeed. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview as uh, to what Technique Tuesday is, just in case you haven't uh, joined us before. And just in case you wonder why I'm sort of glancing around what I do and looking down and things, because I am broadcasting live, I've got comments coming in from lots of people as I go out across social Social media and I like to give people a shout out. So Technique Tuesday is all about the work that I do, how I create uh, pieces. I try to think my projects through and I do it out loud to you guys out there so that you get a little bit of an insight into how my brain works for you and uh, how I put uh, a project together. And this is going to be the first project of the year, which is all based around my big project for 2022 which is called Plan B, B double E. So Plan B is all about me trying to understand uh, the area where I live a little bit more, to get better at gardening, to turn the garden of the studio into something more wildlife friendly, all of those kind of things. So what I thought I would do just very, very quickly is recap where you can find all of this information and then I promise you I will get down to my project. Before I do all of that though, some of you out there are very kind and you tune in live and you will follow along and there's a lot of you this morning. So it's uh, the very least that I can do as you've gone to the effort to tune in to give you a little bit of a shout out. Now on Technique Tuesday, we always have a prize and it's usually won by this lady for being the first to comment. So good morning, Martina. Lovely to have you here. Who else have we got? Hilary P. Good morning. Heather D. One of our lovely admin. Anita Pounder is in the room too. Shani. Ali D. Julie over there in Australia. Mick, our resident poet, is here, of course. Uh, good morning to all of you. Linda D, uh, Jeanette, Rosie over in France. She says it's freezing in France as well. It is very frosty here in Dorset this morning. Uh, Linda, good morning to you. Uh, yes, Patricia is saying cold and frosty in Suffolk. It's like a weather report as well, Technique Tuesday. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Jane on the Isle of Man, good morning. Uh, Joe, just down the road from me. Kathy, Ruth, Pam, and B. Uh, Joy, Joe, Trudy, gosh, there are lots of you this morning. Paula, good morning, lovely lady. Uh, Thea, uh, yes, Shani, saying very frosty uh, in Suffolk. Sandy, uh, Chris, good morning. Cheryl, Penn, Sally, gosh, lots and lots of people here. Molly, good morning. Um, Molly, lovely to have you here. Annette. Irene. Ah, oh, lovely Irene. I haven't spoken to you for a long time, my lovely. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Karen, Jilly and Ulrika, who is over there in Stockholm. We are very much an international audience this morning. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It means a great deal to me. And Rabina, hello, my lovely. So uh, I, if I miss your comments, I do apologise. I've got a lot to kind of get through this morning. But please be aware, I do appreciate every single person who pops up and says hello. We still live in extraordinary times. But now we have the fabulous thing that is social media to say hello, not only to me, but to each other too. It's all about creating a community and uh, being with like-minded people. If you can't be with them in person, then doing it virtually is just as good. Ah, good morning, lovely Margaret as well. I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Happy New Year. So where can you find things uh, that are related to me? Let's just take you through that very quickly and then I'll tell you a bit more about Plan B. So if you want to access uh, my tuition, I have a great big website that's full of all sorts of information and it is called Learning to Paint. So that is um, learningtopaint.co.uk. Let's show you that little graphic. So if you want to access uh, my tuition, good morning, Anne, um, then there's lots of places you can do that. So on the left hand side of this graphic, you can see there is the page that you might actually be viewing me on right now. That is Learning to Paint with Alice and seaboard it's a private group so that we get to share our work without fear of everybody else wading in it's a very lovely very welcoming group I'm very proud of it uh, because everybody 
everybody is just so nice, very encouraging. It doesn't matter uh, where you are on your art adventures. Everybody's very welcoming and very willing to share information too. In the middle, a little bit blurry in the graphic this morning, uh, as am I, uh, <laughs> is my Instagram page, Learning to Paint with ACB. Um, and I, I do post on there uh, occasionally. And on the right hand side, uh, there is the website also. Now I'm just gonna show you the website uh, ever so quickly uh, because uh, it does take a little bit of navigating. There's an awful lot of information on there for you. This is what it looks like. So that's learningtopaint.co.uk. And there's lots and lots of information that you can find. And there's things like resources. You can go back and you can uh, read all the old Technique Tuesday blogs. Uh, so there we have lots of information about Plan B, all of that kind of thing. Resources where you can find uh, my classes or the All Aboard Artists all of that kind of information. So it's all there for the taking, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. However, you might want to access me as an artist. Now, I know that sounds a bit bizarre that there's a distinction between the two, but I do try to kind of... Uh, put a dividing line between me as a tutor and me as an artist. So me as a tutor, that's me sharing my work, sharing how I do things. Me as a tutor, obviously it's really important to me that I still work on commission, that I sell uh, greetings cards, that I uh, create new work, um, the any exhibitions and open studios and any of those kind of things that I have. So the, the division for that is Alison C. Board. So on the left hand side, you can follow me. And can I just put out a plea today? If you are on my Alison C. Board artist page, can you just make sure that you kind of like it or follow it? Um, because then you get to see my information uh, before anybody else. So that's the Facebook page on the left hand side. In the middle is Ali Board Artist on Instagram. Um, Instagram tends to be the place that I post lots of information about Plan B. And there on the right hand side is the sister website to Learning to Page learning to page, learning to paint, that is alisonseaboard.co.uk. And I'm actually going to take you over to that website right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. Here it is. And you'll see uh, that the uh, paintings on the front page, uh, they scroll through them. So you'll see a collection of my work. And there's a gallery on there. There's a bit of information about me. But at the moment, this is the most important part of this website. That is the Plan B blog. So there you go. All about Plan B everything that you could possibly want to know about my project. There's my very messy garden, as it was uh, before at the weekend, and there's what it looked like when I'd had a really good tidy up. Plus, this is what you're all waiting for today, isn't it? Information about uh, where how it's inspired me, but there's lots of stuff on there as well about that. So I do uh, hope that you enjoy all of those kind of things. Now, some people have popped up while I've been doing that. Uh, Jane, good morning. She's apologising for being late. Please don't apologise. It's fine. You, everybody's got a very busy life. And uh, lots of people saying good morning to each other too. So shall we get on with the new project? I am very excited about this. So let's take you to the overhead camera. But I had a lovely surprise given to me uh, last week. And this is it. Now, some of you will know that I work uh, with my mum on occasion. And uh, not only is uh, my mum, or my mum has been a, an artist in her own right in the past, but she is a fantastic seamstress. Uh, and she made me this bag, look at it, to uh, celebrate the start of Plan B. Isn't it awesome? There might be some fabrics uh, that I gave her for Christmas. Not that I had an ulterior motive at all. But uh, yeah, she made me this bag. Isn't it awesome? It's even got a little B clasp look and it's got Plan B at the top the bit I love about it actually I have to say is when you open it up and look at the embroidery that she's done on the inside of that isn't that beautiful that is just stunning isn't it so uh my mum very generously made that for me uh last week to celebrate the start of plan b so thank you mum for that um lots of people saying wow and lots of people saying can they have one and the answer is no it's all mine <laughs> right <laughs> let's get on to this project then 
So let's show you where this uh, project has started because sometimes I think it's just as useful, isn't it, to understand where my head is, uh, how I'm going to go about this project, all of that kind of thing. Now, if you want links to things, okay, you need to go over to the Technique Tuesday blog on learning to paint because this is more about tuition, okay? So if you pop over to the blog, um, you'll find links to this sketchbook, to the paper that I'm going to use, and to a font that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. But here's where it started. So I treated myself to this beautiful little sketchbook. This is a Hannah Mule. Um, I've got two Hannah Mule projects, uh, products today. Um, this is, I just thought this was rather gorgeous. I like the format of it and I like uh, this kind of tinted watercolour paper. There isn't an error on your screens. It is actually this grey colour. So I did a little sketch in the garden of some of the herbs because I'm thinking about uh, what herbs I might grow to benefit my chicken's diet, to what's called herbify my flock. And actually, as it happens, I've had uh, a poorly dog this week and uh, I've been reading an awful lot about he's got a real problem with his digestion. And so actually it turns out the, the herbs that I intend to grow in terms of my chickens are going to benefit him too. So uh, that's really cool. So I started off uh, with this little kind of on plan air sketch of the oregano because oregano is incredibly important to my chicken's health. And then at the weekend when I was out and about in the garden, I came up with this idea. So the idea of this is to create maybe a series of greetings cards, maybe what's called a, a triptych. So you've got a little sketch here. Maybe I'll do more than one herb. Maybe I'll do three paintings and I'll put them together. Not entirely sure about that. That's a bit of an idea that's floating around in the back of my head. But I wanted to start uh, with this. Um, and as you know, I love to include a bit of text in my work. I included some writing on that sketch there but I thought I would make it a bit more formal to actually kind of label it in the way that you might label plants in your garden and of course it's got to have a bee hasn't it it's got to have a bee in there somewhere and I was kind of sketching out the idea that maybe there's the oregano in the background maybe there's a sprig of oregano kind of coming up somewhere and we've got this kind of name label I don't know I'm kind of playing about with ideas um, and I've got a little list because uh, I was trying to remember last week, some of you were giving me some really useful information about what herbs I could potentially grow in the garden, both to encourage uh, the insects and the wildlife uh, to the garden, but also in terms of animal health and husbandry too. So that is where I started. So that is the thing that I'm kind of keeping to one side. I'm not entirely convinced about the layout yet but that is certainly a good place to start so I'm going to uh, pop that over to one side just so that I've got it in my uh, kind of eye line to remind me as I go through the project now it's always really interesting when I start a project as to what materials I'm going to use and I can't say that there's a rhyme or reason to that. I can't honestly say that I always start in the same place. What I have been doing recently is a little bit of research into materials that don't contain any animal products that are vegan or at least vegetarian in their outlook. I'm a vegetarian myself. Obviously, as most of you know, I'm a big lover of um, animals. I tend to rescue anything um, and so I've been looking at materials that uh, have the potential to have no animal products and this is one of them so this is Hannah Mule's agave paper I've worked on this before I've demonstrated on this before and uh, it creates a, a rather nice soft texture so uh, let's just get rid of uh, some of the things this is a block the link to this is on the Technique Tuesday blog over on the learning to paint website so it's glued on four sides and as you can see the paper is really lovely and bright white which means that if this does turn into a, a greetings card or a set of greetings cards it's going to be much easier to scan or photograph because the background isn't going to interfere with it at all and because it's uh, glued down on four sides that also means that I don't have to worry about stretching it or any of those kind of things and I can kind of keep it in the pad um, one of the disadvantages of Technique Tuesday if there can ever be a disadvantage of Technique Tuesday is that I have to keep the work safe from one week to the next and so uh, having it in a pad in this way just means that I can close the pad it can be protected before I share it with you against uh, next week 
Now, lots of people, uh, just uh, let's have a pause for a moment. Lots of people loving the bag and uh, saying how clever my mum is. I know my mum is very clever. And yes, Patricia, I am very, very lucky to have a mum that likes to make things for me. Um, and Helen is saying, good morning all, late but here, packing for a workshop and waiting for my internet to sort itself out. Helen, I think we all, we, we could, uh, if we had a pound for every minute we had to wait for our internet to sort itself out, we'd be very rich people, wouldn't we? <laughs> so um, here is the paper that I have decided to use. So that's the agave paper. But before we get to that, we have a bit of planning to do. So let's show you where I am going to start. And I'll take you through a few of the beginning processes and uh, we'll see how far we get, shall we? So this is a photograph that I took myself. I only took it on my uh, phone camera. Admittedly, I do have a, a rather good smartphone. I do have an iPhone, um, but uh, it doesn't always have to be my fancy camera. Sometimes I do just take little snapshots as I'm around and about if I see something. The oregano itself makes this beautiful pattern, doesn't it? Where you've got these tiny leaves um, that are close cut together. Uh, that uh, kind of get bigger and you can probably see the very bit that I sketched when I was out in the garden where's that sketch gone there it is so you can kind of see the bit that I was focusing on as I did that sketch um, so I've got that uh, I don't uh, this is one of those things that I tend to print it out. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> I just print it out. Uh, good morning, Kat. Lovely to have you here. So we had that. Um, and I did a smaller version of it as well. Again, I'm not entirely convinced why I did a smaller version of it. I just did a smaller version. I think I am in the back of my head. I'm sort of thinking about maybe in the background of this. I don't think one sprig of oregano is enough. And in this sketch, I've kind of done this random script and I think my random scribble equates to possibly having uh, this in the background. I'm not entirely sure yet. I do tend to do that. I do tend to go there with a pencil thinking I will work out what it means later. Maybe that random scribble is that. But I've got those photographs anyway. They're not on very posh photographic paper. They are just on copier paper. I don't really need them to be able to sort of see anything. I'm not looking for fantastic amounts of detail all I'm really looking for is that kind of sense of pattern and how the leaf shapes combine all of that kind of stuff. So I've got that to hand. Um, I'm also running out of space on my desk. Now, what else have I got here? Ah, Going back to this idea of having this kind of label with the oregano uh, wording on it, I started to look at how I could incorporate that. Now, I know a lot of you have commented uh, on my handwriting in the past to say that you quite like my handwriting and you quite like the way that I incorporate it. And when it's like this, I absolutely agree with you. I don't agree with you that, that you like my handwriting, if you see what I mean. I, I agree with you that having this kind of writing all the way through sometimes sort of lends itself to a much more immediate kind of painting. But I think here it requires something a bit more formal. Now, I did play around with letter forming myself and it's not too shabby. I did uh, quite, good morning, Janice. I did quite a bit of calligraphy um, when I was younger. And so my letter forms aren't too bad, but I do think they could be better. And I don't want the letter forms to let down any of the other illustration that I do. So rather than struggle to kind of invent uh, a script on my own, what I did was uh, go back to my computer and uh, as you can see, uh, played about with uh, a few different, uh, not necessarily styles. I landed on this style in the end. Um, but what I did play about was various sizes. And again, I'm still not convinced that this is the right size. And I'm still not convinced that I'm actually going to, um, whether I'm going to do my painting this size or whether I'm going to scale it up or what I'm going to do with it. Have not decided. I'm thinking I'm going to do it this size just as we kind of chat amongst ourselves. 
because if I'm going to do three or four of these, I don't want each one to take me forever to do. If I'm going to do things like mint and chives and thyme and rosemary, I don't want to be spending several weeks just on one, otherwise I will lose the will. So I'm thinking about if I keep it small, that might be manageable. The only disadvantage of keeping it small, of course, is that if I decide to uh, turn it into a greetings card, it is sometimes better to do a painting slightly larger and so that when you scale it down it kind of tightens a little bit. I've got to be very careful that if I do it same size then uh, maybe it's not going to translate as well but these are all things that are floating about in, the, in my head. I know that you like to hear about the craziness that goes on in my head because it helps you with your own process but that's where I am. So I printed it out uh, in various point sizes and if you want to know what this font is you need to go to the Learning to Paint Technique Tuesday blog which went up at 10 o'clock because uh, I've given you the, the name of it over there. So I went through various uh, uh, point sizes, I think this is around the, the 20 kind of size, I think this is around the, the 48 kind of size and I think this is about 60. But eventually it comes to pass that you just kind of have to print it out and say to yourself which one works the best. Now if I am going to go for a similar size, another thing to do is to kind of offer this up next to it. Now, <clears throat> here's an interesting thought. That one looks to be about the same size as the one I created in my sketch. But I think I'm going to struggle to create something that small in text, all right? So I think I'm probably going to go for the larger one, which does mean that I can scale this up ever so slightly. I think the B is probably about the right size. Maybe I will start with the lettering, lay that down first, and then kind of construct everything else around it. Who knows? Who knows? That's why you're all here, isn't it, to see what I do with it. So uh, I've got uh, those two uh, pieces as well. Why have I got them printed out? You will see in just a second. And I have a piece of tracing paper here too, because just in case you haven't seen a Technique Tuesday broadcast before, some of you will know that I tend to construct things on uh, tracing paper before I transfer them onto my watercolour paper so that... I haven't got uh, lots of rubbing out or um, kind of scuff marks or any of that kind of thing. I can transfer it with my tracing paper straight onto there without having to spoil the surface. And that's particularly pertinent when you are using Hannah Mule's agave paper because this is a very soft surface. It creates really beautiful lines with your watercolour. So I don't want to be drawing and rubbing out and drawing and rubbing out and drawing and rubbing out because it will render that surface really no good for painting at all. So I am going to construct the majority of my line drawing onto this piece of tracing paper and then I can do one transfer and we will see what we've got. So I'm going to turn that over so that I've got a nice hard surface, okay? Um, so there's some chat going on uh, in the live broadcast uh, with my mum. I think my mum has been tagged in various things um, with about the handbag. My poor mum is probably out doing things today. I didn't actually tell her that I was going to show the bag in a live broadcast. She'll be uh, a bit befuddled and bewildered. <laughs> It's good to spring things on your mother, isn't it? Right, let's... Uh, no, I don't want that one. I definitely don't want that one. I think I want this one. Now, if I look back at my sketch... Let's get, I'm determined to lose the page of this, aren't I? So that is kind of... Uh, if we look at this from a compositional point of view, uh, if this was a rectangle, it's kind of below centre, isn't it? So I've got the word... And then I kind of created this banner just from scratch around it. So I think that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with that lettering. I'm going to construct the banner. We'll maybe uh, have time to get, uh, maybe I'll trace from here, actually. Hmm. Let's have a think. So uh, you can see, oh, excuse me, I've got hiccups. Um, how I put it together. 
Now I stupidly uh, did, oh I have got some uh, framers tape here. Um, I was just thinking to myself, well you didn't put any framers tape out Ali so that you can tape things down. But I have got a large roll just to, to one side of me. So let's, let's just put it in the middle of our piece of uh, tracing paper. So this is a lightweight tracing paper. It's around about 63 grams. It's not very heavy. I don't need it to be very heavy. Particularly if I'm going to do a transfer, I don't want to be uh, trying to kind of carve my way through the middle my mum is just commenting on being uh, befuddled and bewildered <laughs> sorry to do that to your mum so uh, we're going to put the the lettering kind of just below center in the middle of our piece of tracing paper and what am I going to do with it the first thing I'm going to do with it is I'm going to tape it down so let's take our a bit of frame tape I've only got really wide stuff at the moment that's why it's such a, a massive roll and I'm going to stick it to my hand uh, a couple of times just to flatten out the uh, the stickiness a little bit, okay? And then let's uh, let's make a hinge uh, there and there because I'm going to trace this letter form, okay? Now, why am I doing that <clears throat> when I could construct it myself? A computer does a brilliant job of giving you a perfect lettering. So I could try to print that onto watercolour paper, but I've only got uh, an inkjet printer that I'll be able to do that with, and that isn't going to be waterproof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace off these letter forms, and then I've got almost perfect lettering but it's kind of not so perfect that it doesn't look hand drawn I hope that makes sense it'll make more sense when I do it hopefully who knows always the first time and to do that I'm going to use a very fine pencil now I've actually stopped using these pencils this is uh, a paper mate non-stop pencil and uh, I used to think that they were really fantastic and they are really fantastic they've got a, a point that you can uh, wind up but unfortunately they are disposable they're kind of single use and it does pain me a little bit that I'm going to have to throw something like that uh, which I use an awful lot of plastic I'm going to go back to using a metal one when I've got through all of these that's refillable but it's this kind of idea this very fine point pencil all right so I'm going to put it to one side ever so slightly and I'm going to try really hard not to get my head in shot uh, why am I using these uh, one of these very fine pencils as opposed to using an ordinary pencil like this this I would have to sharpen to keep uh, the point and the detail all the time this one I don't have to do that with this is a 0 0.5 it's going to give me a lovely fine line that uh, I like I say I don't have to keep resharpening and it's a good job I've got my glasses on this morning because I'm going to need them to create these shapes so I'm going back over now if I wasn't doing this for a live broadcast I would take an awful lot more time and care over this um, but you don't want to see me faff about with this this morning you want me to get on with it so I'm going to do it uh, faster rather than slower and then I can always edit everything else afterwards. So let's get that N in. Um, there's a point worth making, I think, about when you're doing lettering on a project. There will always come a point with this, good morning Janet, where you start to question the spelling of a particular word. You type it out and you look at it and you print it out and you trace it and you do all those kind of things. And there's this really odd thing that happens. I'd be interested to know if it happens to anybody else um, where you look at it and you go, is that spelt right? And I end up spell checking words that I know are absolutely uh, perfectly spelt. But it's a very odd thing about staring at letter forms. You start to question whether it's the right letters in the right order. So don't worry if that happens to you. Now let's just lift that off and check that we've got it. Yes, I think we have. I've gone a bit kind of off piste down here, but we can tidy that up later. So let's remove that from our letter form. So in a minute, you should be able to see how I've been able to create uh, decent lettering 
without the stress of doing it myself. So there we go. There's our oregano lettering. Now, it is a bit wild and wonderful in places, so let's tidy it up. There's not a lot of point me spending ages over this because don't forget, I've still got to transfer it to my watercolour paper. So if I spend lots of time tidying this up and neatening it all up and all the rest of it, that isn't really going to help me because eventually I've got to put it onto my watercolour paper and tidy it up so I would just be doing it twice. Now our resident poet, the lovely Mick, has come up with uh, something uh, what's he put? Herbs. A joy to view their shapes and flowers. Watch the bees work on them all daylight hours. The pleasure you that you get from their lovely scents and the flavours you taste in your food they augment. Oh Mick, you are so clever with your poetry. I'm in awe of how fast you put those things together. Thank you very much for creating that for this morning's Technique Tuesday broadcast. Wonderful. Uh, lots of people saying uh, they have issues with it, whether you've spelt it right, spend a lot of time I'm spell checking. Cheryl has said, yes, it happens to me. Words become weird and wonderful the longer I stare at them. Cheryl, I think that's an absolutely brilliant summary of what happens. You just stare at them and stare at them and they don't seem to get any better. So there we have uh, our oregano lettering. Let's create, let's look at that sketch again and see how I created that banner. Let's put that together for you uh, on here. I'm gonna sketch it out kind of lightly first. I'm gonna give it a little bit more space than I gave the one in my sketch. So let's create some sides to that uh, banner. Do I need to, um, maybe I'll uh, shave that one down a little bit. So can you see already, I am doing some editing but because I'm doing it on my tracing paper, I don't have to overly worry about it. Now, in the sketch, I made it really wide. And I don't know why I did that. I really don't know why I did that. It doesn't need a lot of space top and bottom. It needs a lot, uh, some space for this descender. This is what, um, when a letter comes down below a line, that kind of sweep around is called a descender. Um, and so I think I can just clip that in there and then let's balance it up at the top. Probably can put a little bit less at the top. We'll have a look at that, see what that looks like. Yeah, not too shabby. Not the, the neatest drawn box, but again, no point me spending ages editing it because I'm still going to have to edit it when it goes on to the watercolour paper. So let's uh, put a little box around that. And then to create a banner, it looks a little bit on the slant at the moment. That's, um, it's because I'm not able to, to stare at it. I've just got to lift it up. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And yeah, that'll do. And then to create this banner, it's a really easy system for doing it. So you've got a rectangle around this and then you create two other rectangles that are slightly below it, all right? And behind it as well. Actually, let's move that one in a little bit. This is turning out to be more of a square than a rectangle, but you get the point. Let's uh, rub that part of it out. So I've got one that side and then I need to match it over here. So we'll push that one out a little bit further, bringing that down, lining that up and then pushing it in. Now, are those kind of equidistant? Yeah, they look right. So you can already see you've kind of got that fold in it. Um, and then you can decide what else you want to do with it. So it needs to join up. So this corner needs to go down to uh, this corner. And this corner needs to go down to this corner. So can you see it now looks like something that has folded and uh, gone out that way. Now you can sort of say to yourself, well, do I want to do anything else with it? Do I want to uh, put a bit of a curve in it? You might want to put some sort of banner ends on it. So you could, you could put uh, a V shape in on it. Actually, that's quite nice. <laughs> there you go. That's Technique Tuesday in a nutshell doing something and then going, mm, that works, doesn't it? Um, let's get, actually, let's get it in the middle. <laughs> that is not in the middle, Ali. So let's put the point in there and there, and then let's put the point in there and, oops, there. And then if I rub those uh, center lines out, then we've got kind of more of a label. There we go. That's quite, that's all right, isn't it? 
<laughs> I'll do. Um, and then again, I'm not going to overdo it because I don't need to. If you put a little shadow in underneath, then uh, this bit looks like it's ahead of the rest of it. Good morning, good morning, good <laughs> morning, Maureen, and good morning, Suzanne. So you can see uh, how I constructed that. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put those letter forms uh, to one side. I'm going to take my tracing because you can see how much bigger it is now. Look, do -do 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 -do. Uh, I, I quite liked this sprig, morning Joe, of uh, oregano that I had constructed. So I'm going to trace it right off from here. There's another little handy hint. If you do something in a sketchbook, don't think you've got to be all noble and recreate that by drawing it all again out on whatever surface you're working on. You can sketch it, uh, trace it um, straight from your sketchbook. Or of course you could photocopy this. You, If you've got one of those printers that is a copier as well, shove it in there, take a print out of it and do it from that. Do not think that you have to recreate everything from scratch all the time. If you've done something really stellar in your sketchbook that you're happy with, why would you put yourself through trying to recreate it and getting all stressed out about it all over again? You constructed it in the first place, which means that you are perfectly entitled to trace off a new version of it. And uh, we've sort of talked about tracing uh, long and hard at times, haven't we, as part of Technique Tuesday. And I know an awful lot of you know where I stand on tracing because tracing is very often classed as uh, cheating, which is just the biggest load of nonsense ever. OK, there are skills required in uh, constructing a tracing, as we have demonstrated this morning. And if any of you uh, out there ever are put in the position of being made to feel bad about tracing or transferring or any of those kind of things, I invite you to give that person my email address and I will have that discussion on your behalf with them. Um, because it's just nonsense, absolute and complete nonsense. So I am doing this uh, from my sketchbook. I'm taking all the bits of it that I really liked, the kind of turned edges of my oregano leaves and looking at where the veins and things, I'm not entirely convinced that they're in the right place, but they'll do for now. And there you can see you've got that sprig of oregano. So it's starting to come together now. Now I did, I'm really bad, as co considering how much I like bees, they're a bit hit and miss when I paint them, particularly in this kind of illustrative format. Uh, sometimes they work really well and sometimes they are not good at all. And actually I happened to create one that I was quite pleased with in an illustration kind of fashion. So again, why would I go through the process of trying to redraw that when I have one here that I can pop on the end of my little oregano banner? Now, let's just think about where I want it. Where do I want it? I still want the oregano to sh word to show up, but I don't want it to look disengaged with the rest of it. So I think, well, well, we'll just do it, shall we? And we'll stop talking about it and we'll get on with it. So let's pop that line over the top. Um, Heather is saying that her bees vary enormously as well. Yeah, I'm still yet to find the definitive version, uh, Heather, of uh, how to draw a bee. But then that's what makes it interesting, isn't it? If you knew how to draw it, you'd get bored and then you'd move on to something else, wouldn't you? So I think there are subject matter that you come back to again and again and again as an artist. Um that you're just constantly trying to find the definitive way of drawing them or painting them. That's what makes them interesting. So let's put, where's that gone? Hmm. I tell you what, I don't like the wings on that side. So here's a handy hint. Okay. If you like something on one side and you're using tracing paper, turn it over and then use that shape again. All right. So I came down that way and around the corner and then I use this one down that way and around the corner and then look when I turn it back over all done nice and symmetrical uh, so we'll get that one in there we'll get that one in there and then uh, my poor bee needs some fuzzy legs so we're saying possibly 
that this is either a white-tailed bumblebee or a buff-tailed bumblebee. I am still learning about bumblebees. Um, and I still haven't quite got to the bottom of the difference between a white-tailed bumblebee. And I know that they're supposed to be different colours, but, but you tell when they're out and about and buzzing in your garden. I can't wait this summer when they come back again to my garden to try to get to the bottom of recognising them. So we'll put those legs in there. What's wrong with that? It doesn't join up. Let's put my piece of um, paper underneath. So yeah, I've got my B. That's kind of uh, coming together nicely. Again, not a great deal of point me shading it at the moment. Um, Julie is making a very good point. She says, you could look at each version of a bee you draw as one with its own character. Yes, Julie, you're absolutely right. I should be a lot more positive about it. I just think that sometimes some of my bees look a little bit lopsided. They are lopsided bees, no doubt. So we've got the, the bee on there. We've got the sprig of oregano on there. Now I have a better idea of how I can utilise this. So underneath here, I'm going to position this where I think there's some interesting patterns to be had. I don't want them to overly interfere with um, the kind of sprig or the bee, but it would be nice to, perhaps I want larger ones. Do I want larger ones? Do I want them that big? No, I don't. Nope. I like this size. Glad I, I printed this out. I don't, as much as I like that little clump of oregano, I think this one will serve me better down here. So very quickly, I'll do more to this uh, before I see you all next week. But I'm going to just very quickly put some of these shapes into the background. Um, and then I can have a think about whether they work or don't work. And again, the, the joy of doing it onto tracing paper. What's that one doing? Oh, I see. Um, is that if I don't like it, I can rub it out. I can make an alteration. And then I uh, am not kind of ruining my lovely piece of watercolour paper. And also it means you can kind of make all the mistakes. You could, uh, when you got to the end of your tracing, you could photocopy this, couldn't you? You could uh, use it again. Let's just move it around a little bit to get some interesting shapes. There's all manner of things that you could do with this. Uh, to help you with your process. Very often when I'm teaching, I encourage people to take photographs all through the stages of their work <clears throat> for no other reason than if uh, for some reason your painting doesn't turn out as you would expect, but you were really pleased with it at like the drawing part of it. If you've got a photograph of that drawing, you could then print that out uh, trace it down onto your watercolour paper and you're starting from a different point rather than having to go through that process again and again and again and again. If you've already got your drawing done, you can go, right, well, I don't need to worry about that now. Drawing is done. We'll recreate it uh, so that I can get onto the painting part of it. And sometimes uh, when you're learning and experimenting and doing things, that's really important because you don't want to lose heart with it. You don't kind of want to lose faith with what you're doing. You don't necessarily want to spend hours and hours and hours pouring back over it again. All of those kind of things. Don't like that already. I've got... Hmm, maybe I need to go and take more photos of oregano. <laughs> I thought I'd got enough, but clearly not. I'm not wild about this pattern at the minute, but we'll put it in so that we can see what we've got and see uh, how it's kind of manifesting itself. I might be coming up with a different idea for what to do in the background, but I need to have a think. Sometimes with projects, you can't make all the decisions in one session. It's just not conducive to being creative. Sometimes you have to walk away from it Put it to one side, have a think, and then come back to it later. So let's just have a quick look at that. Uh, yes, so people are talking uh, in the live Facebook chat about tracing and about this idea of is uh, tracing cheating. And uh, I think it's Ali D that started the uh, discussion about this, about camera obscura. And uh, Mick is right. Uh, years ago, there was a programme uh, presented by David Hockney called Secret Knowledge. There was a book to go with it as well. I have the book on my shelf somewhere. 
Um, he's saying that you can watch it on YouTube now, which is uh, really helpful. Thank you very much. And it was all about how uh, artists like Vermeer, for example, would use a camera obscura to project what they saw in front of them down onto their canvas or their paper or whatever it was. Now, that isn't to say that just because so-and-so did it, it's fine for me to do it. What I'm trying to get across to you is that it is a way of transferring an image to a platform that has validity, okay? And so a lot of people are very quick to jump on the, oh, you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that, shouldn't do the other. They are what I term the art police, <laughs> okay? And my argument is and has always been, it doesn't matter how you are creative, what matters is that you are getting the results that bring you satisfaction, okay? Now, if that is tracing, if that is transfer, if that is working on plan air, if that is sitting with a load of photographs in your armchair of an evening, none of those things are right and wrong. There is no hierarchy of those things. It's whatever works for you. This is what works for me. Therefore, this is the way that I work, okay? And that is why I sort of take umbrage with anybody who would might suggest to you that that is not the way that you should be doing because it's classed as cheating and it's nonsense. Cheating is if I came to all of you, and there's a lot of you in the room now, if I came to you and I said, um, I drew all of this with no tracing whatsoever, that is cheating. OK, making a claim about something and saying that you did something in a particular way when you didn't, that is cheating. All right. If you went, yeah, 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 I created all of this with a piece of tracing paper that doesn't downgrade the fact that you did some transfer techniques, quite the reverse, because we've already proved today, haven't we, that there is a skill involved in putting together a composition and all of those kind of things. So please don't let anybody ever tell you that tracing is cheating. Can you tell it's a bit of a bugbear for me? <laughs> now, I rubbed out those bits in the, the top, top left hand corner and I quite uh, quite like the way it's come together now. I quite like uh, this. If I put a border around that part of my drawing, then I could possibly make the other parts of this a little bit fuzzier. Maybe not put quite so much detail in some of these oregano leaves and pick out that one sprig and the bee and the banner then I have the potential to, for creating, I'm going to put this in very quickly and very badly, a rather nice uh, composition. Let's just put a border in really fast so that you can see what I'm talking about. It won't be particularly parallel. I just want uh, to show you what I'm considering. So maybe that needs to go over there a little bit more. So there you go. Can you see now I've got the potential for um, a nice uh, greetings card. Oh, I've had another idea for product as well, but I'll keep that one under my hat uh, temporarily. But there is the uh, potential for the composition and then what I will try to do before next week if I have time if I get this down on to my watercolor paper then we can start from that point starting to think about uh, possibly inking things in painting things in and the like uh, before we start anything else so I hope that was helpful. I know that's a lot of me talking, um, but I hope that that is helpful in terms of understanding where I come from for a project, because that's sometimes half the battle, isn't it? The painting of it is a, is a whole other type of thing. Sometimes the battle is having the idea and then thinking, how am I going to put that together? How can I actually construct that without getting really stressed about it? OK, these techniques, this kind of uh, piecemealing it, jigsaw puzzling it together, using particular materials like tracing paper, like a camera, like a, a printer, scanner, copier, any of those kind of 
things, whatever it takes for you to get your project down on paper. Now, don't disappear on me yet. Um, I just want to do a little bit of a recap because we have so many audiences uh, tuning in this morning. We have you guys who are on my Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard Facebook group. Uh, we also have uh, some of you who are watching this via the Technique Tuesday blog or on YouTube. But we also have the Artist Demo Days audience as well because this is my month. January is my month for taking over the Artist Demo Days page and sharing with you some of the things that I do. So that I hope it was helpful. Let's just uh, give some of you a little bit of a shout out, those of you who are tuning in live. Lots of people uh, apologising for being late. Don't worry, it's not a problem. Uh, Rosie is saying you could paint this onto uh, roof tiles and plant them. Okay, tell me more, Rosie. Uh, Christine is saying uh, thank you very much. Uh, Anne is saying ideas for my herb planter are evolving, and I want to hear more about that too. Uh, Ruth is saying uh, very helpful and informative. Thank you, Ruth. That's very kind. Uh, Ali is saying maybe some pyrography labels for the herb garden. Yes, she's what she's referring to is a little project that we did as part of my All Aboard Artist membership where I started using a bit of pyrography and burning into wood. Maybe I will uh, share that demonstration with you uh, next week. Uh, lots of people being very kind and saying it's inspirational. That's good. That's, uh, you know, as a tutor, that's what I'm here to do. And lots of people uh, saying thank you very much. You are all very welcome. A huge thank you to everybody who has taken the time to tune in live and a huge thank you to everybody who has taken the time to watch all the way through to the end of this demonstration. Please don't forget that that Plan B project is happening every single day throughout this year and probably into next as well. Um, do continue to uh, follow me on any of the social media platforms or my blogs and don't forget if you follow me on Facebook, um, Alison Seaboard Artist, then give me a like or a follow just double check that you have done that so that you get the most up-to-date information and I can share things like uh, some of the greetings cards that I'm hoping to produce and you can support me in that way so whatever it is that you're doing today no matter where you are across the planet I do hope that you have a really lovely day I do hope that you continue to carry on with your own painting projects don't forget to tag me in anything so that I can see them too because I always like I don't always comment but I do like to see anything that anybody shares so until we meet again whether virtually or in person you take lots of care won't you <laughs> bye everybody bye